Hi, good day to all. Welcome to Trade the Markets Like a Pro, a series of educational webinars. This will be module for using technical indicators to gauge momentum and strength. So before we start this module, let's take a look at the disclaimer slides first. Alright, let's get started. So basically, before I jump into the various technical or medical, mathematical, mathematical indicators that I'll share with you, some principles about technical indicators. Firstly, it acts as an alert for potential trend change, such as a bullish breakout above resistance or a bearish breakdown below support due to warning momentum readings. Secondly, is to confirm to reinforce the signals from other technical analysis tools such as key reversal Japanese candlesticks patterns in conjunction with oversold and overbought conditions. So don't worry, later I'll share with you what does it mean by oversold and overbought conditions as indicated by several key technical indicators. And lastly, it has a tool to predict such as a gauge for the direction of future prices. All right. So basically, there are two main categories of indicators. The first category are leading indicators. This group of indicators generates signals when a trend is about to reverse. That means, i.e., if we start to see price action or trend analysis of any particular tradable instrument that is going up with uptrend, a particular set of leading indicators are able to tell us whether this uptrend can still maintain its momentum or the momentum will start to change and the trend is about to reverse either to sideways or to a downtrend. So such leading indicators are such as MACD histogram, RSI, stochastic, Bollinger Bands width. And lastly, another group of indicators are lagging. They do not lead, but however, they follow the price section of the, that tradable instrument. So we call it a trend following behavior. This is to determine or to reinforce a price action trend and generate signals only after the trend has reversed. So some of these indicators or lagging indicators are MACD, moving averages and Bollinger Band. So bear in mind that MACD and MACD histogram are different. So in the next particular slide, I will share with you all the difference between a MACD histogram and the MACD. All right. So now before I jump into the MACD, what are trend indicators? So basically, there are two sets of indicators within the category of leading and lagging. So trend indicators are moving average, which I covered in module one. So they identify the current trends and as well as to set up dynamic support and resistance levels. And the next particular popular trend indicators are moving average convergent divergence. MACD in short is to identify the current trend and as well as a potential change in trend. So now let's go into a greater detail on this particular trend indicator called MACD. So what is MACD? So in fact, MACD, as you can see that it's based on a set of mathematical calculation. Firstly, there will be the MACD line, the line in blue over here. It's actually the difference between the 26 period exponential moving average, subtract the 12 period exponential moving average. Then thereafter, it comes out with a signal line. So this signal line is a smoother version or, or a smooth moving average of the MACD line. So it's taking into account of the nine period exponential moving average of the MACD line. And the MACD histogram is actually the difference between the signal line and the MACD line. So this is what it means over here. So I could see that graphically, as I plotted on this uh, slide itself, this is the indicator. So basically MACD line is the one in blue. All right. So if this MACD line goes above the center line, which is zero here, that means the 26 day moving average or the 26 period exponential moving average is above the 12 period moving average based on this mathematical property. And the one that is lagging behind the blue line, the red line, this is called the signal line. 
all right, we call it the smoothing factor. So one of the reasons why they use the signal line is to generate buy sell signals or bullish or bearish signal based on several or key properties of the MACD later I'll explain later. And the histogram is basically the difference between the blue line and the red line, which is the MACD line and the signal line. Okay, so this is what it means. Firstly, the purpose of the MACD is to firstly to identify trend. Okay, so if we start to see an upward sloping MACD line above the center line, all right, it means that we are in an uptrend. All right, like this. And if the MACD line is below the center line and is downward sloping over here, we are in a bearish trend. All right, or a downtrend. Okay, so right now, the next key thing is to identify a potential change in the trend. All right, so let's say number three. Okay, this is where the MACD line crosses above the signal line from below the center line, which is zero over here. This is identified as a bullish signal where a prior downtrend is about to change to a uptrend. All right. And number four is where the MACD line crosses below the signal line from above the center line. So this is a kind of a bearish signal that indicate to us that the prior uptrend is about to change its trend to a downtrend. All right. Okay, now the next set of indicator, we call it the momentum indicators. There are actually three commonly used momentum indicators that I like to share with you. In fact, in the universe right now, there are, I would say, close to more than 20 momentum indicators, but more or less, they actually represent or they signal the same kind of concept or trading behavior. So there are actually three popular use indicators, momentum indicators, will be the relative strength index, MACD histogram, stochastic oscillator. So the difference between these three is actually the overbought and oversold condition. So for RSI, they measure the change in momentum as well as they normalize it where this RSI value cannot go beyond a certain value above and below it. it means there's a floor and there's a ceiling. So that's why we have this overbought and oversold condition. MACD histogram actually is based on the principle of moving average. So there is actually no floor and ceiling. Very hard for us to determine overbought oversold condition, but they measures a change in momentum. Stochastic oscillator is very similar to RSI, except that they have this bullish and bearish signal in the very short term. All right, so basically all of them measures change in momentum, except for that the RSI and the stochastic oscillator, they have these additional uh, principles of detecting overbought and oversold conditions. All right, so basically what are momentum indicators? So the basic very advantage of why, why do we use momentum indicator is because change in momentum tends to lead ahead of a potential change in trend. So think of it, like a car traveling ahead. So in order for a car to change its direction, the first thing you got to do is to change its speed. That means in order for a car to slow down, to come to a stop, it got to slow down its speed first. So think about it as momentum indicators is having a measurement of the speed of change of trend, or you have the rate of change. So basically, let's take a look at the MACD histogram. Okay, so basically what is a bullish divergence? So this represents a bullish change in momentum. Okay, so what do we see over here? Do you see that over here, the price of Apple is trading in a downtrend? Lower high, this is called lower low. But correspondingly, if you look at the histogram, it's actually slipping higher low or it's upward sloping, indicating to us that the, the speed of lower low is actually slowing down. Okay. And most importantly, this occurrence happened before the price changes up. That means from downtrend to uptrend. Similarly, con or, con or in converse will be the bearish divergence. This is why I call a bearish change in momentum. Take a look at the price action of Apple. Higher highs, 
uptrend and correspondingly take a look at how the MACD histogram behave it's downward sloping that means what it means over here is it's a leading indication that the speed of moving up is losing momentum that means ie there's a high chance that this uptrend here doesn't have any more strength to push higher and the trend may start to reverse down or change that means ie trend change is either sideways or downtrend bear in mind that uh, if you could recap our module one what is a trend uh, the, the, the key categories of trend okay so now RSI relative strength index so this is the difference between RSI and MACD histogram is RSI has a overbought and oversold region all right due to the fact that uh, basically this is the very we do not know how to calculate because right now all popular charting software like the one we have in our CMC markets platform the system or the platform will auto calculate for us all right so basically in a nutshell it measures the momentum of recent price changes with a look back period of 14 and it normalize it with the value of 0 to 100 therefore giving us a ceiling and a floor which is the ceiling is kind of the overbought zone anything that's above 70 and the floor is anything that are below 30 we call it the oversold zone and same thing we have the, the measures the momentum as well called the bullish change in momentum which is the bullish divergence price action versus RSI at the oversold zone and the bearish change in momentum we call it the bearish divergence is where we take the price action versus the RSI at the overbought zone okay same going back looking at the, the same price chart of Apple on the daily chart itself if you could see over here is that firstly let me take a look at the example of a bullish change in momentum we call it the bullish divergence so in order to spot bullish divergence the RSI must be at the oversold region first all right which is over here and take a look at the price action itself lower low downtrend and the corresponding price action at the oversold zone is upward sloping very similar to what you see in the MACD histogram except that this one allows us to have a better gauge why because of the flaw that it has started to uh, form in the calculation of the RSI where the bearish or pardon me the bullish divergence is detected at the oversold region okay a leading kind of observation before the price changes to an uptrend now bearish divergence is to spot it at the overbought region anything that's above 70 and above which is over here and look out for the price action higher high on the price action but lower high or downward sloping on the RSI indicating to us a leading kind of observation that this up move here is lagging of strength to push higher and there's a risk of a trend change all right okay so now how about stochastic oscillator so the thing about stochastic oscillator is instead of measuring closing prices it actually take into account of a price change versus a high low range with within a look back period similar to RSI the default default of 14 period and it normalize it from 0 to 100 but however because of its calculation it's much more sensitive than the RSI as it oscillate between oversold and all what zone more frequently and hence is very applicable or more applicable to short-term trading strategies if you use it on a lower time frame such as the 15 minute or the one hour rather than on the daily time frame to generate a trading setup so very similar to the uh, principles of the RSI except for that the because due to its diff differentiation of the calculation of its high low range rather than taking off a uh, close close prices of in the look back period its overbought zone is slightly higher anything that is above 80 is considered overbought and its oversold zone is slightly lower than the RSI anything that is below 20 is considered oversold all right so the purpose of using this overbought oversold is this once the the stochastic oscillator hit the overbought zone i will tend to look for a pullback in a short term trend and once it hit the oversold zone i will tend to look for a snapback in a short term 
downtrend. Okay, this is what it means. Huh? So let's go to the CMC trading platform and let me share with an example of an hourly chart, a very short term chart. This is the hourly chart of the euro dollar. So what I plotted over here is the stochastic at the top and the RSI at the bottom. And take a look at it over here. If you look at the recent price action recently over here on the 3rd of March, which is the last month, the, the early part of last month. In, so you notice that at this point in time, okay, your stochastic is 80, over here, it hit 80 and above. And you notice that your RSI hasn't even hit the overbought level. So this is definitely a more sensitive indicator than the RSI. So basically say, hey, once I start to hit this overbought zone over here on the stochastic, this is where I could look out for potential bearish trading setup. As you all know that prior to this push up, we see a series of lower low and lower high. So this is kind of a downtrend on the hourly chart of the euro dollar. So once I start to see a stochastic hitting the overbought zone, so this is where I may want to initiate a bearish setup to trade within this downtrend. All right, over here. And if I were to look at this period in time, okay, let's go back here. Yes. Okay, so let's say here, this stochastic has starts to, pardon me, the price action of this euro dollar has starts to come down in a down, short term downtrend. And you notice that your stochastic has really hit the oversold region. Okay, but nevertheless, okay, like I said earlier on, technical indicators, one of the key things about technical is that we do not immediately jump into the signal or the observation of technical indicators. The technical indicators is oversold, doesn't immediately tell us that, hey, this will be a immediate bearish signal for us to trigger a bearish setup. All right, if you realize that, what it means to tell us that, hey, it's coming to oversold, there is a potential chance of a rebound within this downtrend, this short term downtrend. But if you realize that over here, the price can going to go down go down before bouncing up. Notice that over here. So what it means that over here is that we need to actually use technical indicators in conjunction with other form of technical analysis tool that I cover earlier on for module one to module three. So nevertheless, not to worry right now, the purpose of this module is to share with you all the properties and the behavior of several key technical indicators. So in my next module, I'll share with you how to put all these technical indicators in conjunction with what we learned so far in module one and module three. That means talking about trend analysis, identification of support and resistance, and as well as the, the, the various key Japanese reversal candlestick pattern to actually formulate a proper trading strategy. All right, so that uh, keep that in the mind, in the back of our mind right now, and also technical indicators like there's the stochastic over here. Before I jump into the next indicator, is you realize that in the stochastic there's this dotted red line. So in fact, this dotted red line is actually the move a kind of moving at a three period moving average of the stochastic line, which is in black. So if those who actually use stochastic is uh, as a kind of a trading to, uh, signal tool. The blue line crosses above the red line is a buy signal and the black line crosses below the red line is a sell signal. But to me, I will never, I don't tend to use this as a, a, one of my core uh, trading setup. Why? Because uh, the this set of bullish and bearish crossover, it happens too frequent and it tends to give me a more several uh, false uh, trading setup based on my experience, all right? Now, moving on to our slides, okay? The last one I wanna share with you all is the volatility indicators. So there are two of them. Bollinger band width is actually measures the percent difference between the upper band and the lower band. 
a rising bandwidth represents increasing volatility, which give us a very good gauge of a uh, it forms one of the two to use in a counter trend trading setup strategy. And a falling bandwidth, it represents decreasing volatility. We call it the squeeze condition. This is one of the what I call elements for me to actually uh, set up a breakout trading setup strategy. And the next one, it doesn't give any signal or condition. It's the average true range. It actually measures a series of prices. It takes into consideration of the consideration of any particular trading instrument, high, low, and close, and it's moved them accordingly to a default period of 14. So since this doesn't give us a kind of a trading, uh, uh, we call it a signal or a, a, to be used in the trading setup, but however, because it actually normalizes according to the value of these uh, trading instruments, i.e. that means we, if you're talking about stock prices, it will be in two decimal pr price, if you're talking about a foreign exchange pair, let's say the Aussie dollar, the Kiwi dollar, or the Euro dollar, it'll be in four decimal place. So it can be very useful to use it as a calculation of a stop loss level, which I will be covering in greater detail in module five and module six. Okay, so now let me go to what is Bollinger Band with first. So it's basically it's based on the volatility band placing above and below a moving average. So the volatility is calculated based on the standard deviation. The middle band it will be a 20 period moving average, and the upper band will be using the 20 period MA plus two times the 20 period standard deviation of the price action, and the lower band will be the 20 period MA minus two times the 20 period standard deviation of price. And basically, this bandwidth is actually the difference between the upper and lower band. It's also an indicator that can be plotted in our CMC uh, charting uh, package, which is our platform. It gives us a better visual appeal. So this is what I mean. Uh, if I were to take into account of this one hour Aussie dollar, all right, so this is, a, this is to detect the expansion. So in order to detect the expansion over here is what do I mean by this? So there's this bandwidth over here. So if you were to look at, and this period of time, this bandwidth here has starts to rise. Okay, it's a rising bandwidth. So in this period of time, this rising bandwidth actually indicate to us that, hey, this particular down move here is being overstretched there is a risk of a snapback rally, which happened in the Australia dollar, the Aussie dollar in this particular short term time frame. Now, the next one is to detect breakout trading setup. Taking into example of this daily chart on JP Morgan, very recent chart itself. So now I want to share with you all is to firstly to detect the contraction or the squeeze. So as you could see over here, the upper band and the lower band starts to get narrow together. So to have a better visual, take a look at the bandwidth. It's actually declining. Then thereafter, after this bandwidth starts to decline, you notice that the price action starts to actually shape a bullish breakout. All right. Over at this point in time, Prices have started to form a contraction and squeeze as well as indicated by the upper and lower band. From this bandwidth indicator here, which is the derived of the difference between the upper and lower band, you see the bandwidth starts to decline again. Then thereafter, the price action starts to shape a breakout. And most recently, in the last, I would say five or seven trading weeks, trading days, the bandwidth has starts to decline. All right, indicating to us there's a potential breakout that is looming. So the next key question to ask yourself, breakout, there are bullish breakout and bearish breakout. So how do we determine whether the breakout over here is more skewed towards the bullish side or the bearish side? Huh? So this is where we got to use other technical analysis tool to give us a gauge of this impending breakout that is may take shape in JP Morgan. So this I will cover more in greater detail in module five and module six of Trade Like a Pro series. 
So to put it together, this these some three golden tips on how to use technical indicators. Firstly, price action, trend analysis, volume, and identification of support and resistance always come first before the signal or the condition of technical indicators. So do not always open up a chart and straight away look for bearish or bullish signal on technical indicators. Do your trend analysis first and your identification of support and resistance first. And also focus on just two or three indicators and learn their mechanics inside out. Anything that is more than three, that's four or five indicators, it will be fertile, uh, it will be not very useful, all right? And also never choose indicators that generate the same signals. Choose indicators that complement each other, such as if I have to use moving average, I can use it with RSI, but not moving averages with MACD. Why? Because both of them are trend identification too. And also not RSI with MACD histogram because both of them generate the same signal like bullish and bearish divergences. Okay, so with that, thank you for your time.